Hi, Lumineers. Welcome to the Lighter Side Show. I'm your host, Jamie Butler, the everyday medium. And if you haven't guessed, we've done that take 12 times already because <laughs> Laura and I have the giggles. Yep. She is shopping in her head right now for a shirt that says, I have dog hair. Dog hair, don't care. Don't care. Yeah. Because <laughs> we've been sitting here picking <laughs> her dog sunnies. I have a white golden retriever. <laughs> Animal lover. Yes. Activist, big voice, astrologer, reader, clairvoyant, clairsentient, blog writer. She has a great blog. Everything Laura Boone can be found at lauraboone.org. Lumineers, you got to go check this out. Hit the RSS feed on her stuff because when you get it, it kind of speaks to your soul. It's really oh, weird. Thank you, Jamie. I have noticed. Like, I think sometimes you follow me and you write the blog about it. And I'm like, Lori, you're talking to me. Mm, thank you. That's what's so nice about your readings. We were talking before the camera got rolling. When Laura does her astrology, mediumship readings, it's really channeling, honestly. The information she gives is so direct. It's like right to you. It's not this broad brush stroking of thing where you're like, well, it could be, maybe not. Like, we were joking, <laughs> Colleen behind the camera was like, I don't know, you might wake up in the morning, you might not. I, it can go either way. And with, when you're talking to I'll get, Laura... I'll get with you. Yeah. <laughs> I, talk, I talk straight to people. She does. It's right to you. And when you leave, like, honestly, Lumineers, I have gone for myself. I've gone with my business partners. And we sit down and we look at our personalities and how our charts align. Mm -hmm. And we have gotten so much from this. Yes. Thank you. In Thank fact, you. Lord Boone, if I may announce something, I need your services one more time. Probably a lot more than just one more time, but I'd like to get Drum your roll. services of when do I launch the Lighter Side Network? It's so exciting. So if you could look at the chart of when it's the best to launch a network, March 2017, the Lighter Side Show is expanding into a network and it's including four other hosts guys four other hosts we're gonna have five hosts <laughs> it happens to be all women we didn't shoot for that it was just who showed up and some that you've already met and if i may introduce to you laura boone Hi. host I'm of her new thrilled. show i'm so thrilled to be on this network and i have to tell you guys the quality and the diversity on this network that's what i love the most it's like the you know the a team of all these different disciplines if you will, right? Yes. And we all have something a little bit different to bring. We're all friends. We all, I think, have a lot of integrity. We're all trying to do this for the right reasons. I enjoy that we're not being motivated by corporations or yep. companies or products or being, you mm -hmm. know, fed influences from somebody else or even our society or culture telling us to be in the box a certain way or only present this of what can be understood or what's accepted. Yeah, we're totally taking the everyday and making it extraordinary. Mm -hmm. So it's where the everyday and the extraordinary meet. That's the Lighter Side Network. I think we're all trying to create, and I think we're all trying to help people with our different talents yes. and reach people. And I've been a lumineer for as long as you've been doing this. And I'm just thrilled to be a part of it and can't wait. And um, yeah, what I'm gonna be doing on the network and what I was wanted to talk about a little bit today is I am a clairvoyant and clairsentient, so I have intuitive abilities, but I have studied astrology and tarot extensively. And I loved what you said earlier, Jamie, about the fact that who cares about any of this stuff, really, honestly, if it doesn't help you and it doesn't speak to you and you don't really get something out of it, and if it right. doesn't relate to your life. So really what one of my, how I got involved in astrology, it was probably, oh my gosh, I don't want to, like 25 years ago, a really long time. <laughs> I was probably three. <laughs> Is like that about math. right? I use the same math. I was about three. It's incredible. It about 25 years ago. And um, I remember the first time that I pulled out a chart and I really started trying to figure out what does this mean. And I don't mean, you guys, what you read in the newspaper. Oh, I'm an Aries. And then you read. Think about it. 12% uh, of the population is an Aries. It's very general. Right, there's 12 signs. So the first time I ever looked at my chart, I had an aha moment to borrow from Oprah. And I saw myself and I started reading about all these different things. And I said, oh my gosh, that makes so much sense. And 
what I like to use astrology for when I do readings for people, but also I, I really like to help teach people how to use their own chart. Oh, that's what I um, love. But what it's really about is self-development. It's about um, really having a conversation with yourself about yourself. What are things I can improve? What are talents that I kind of know I have, but they're just sitting there dormant and I'm, I'm not bringing enough courage, mm -hmm. you know, to really embrace talents that I have. Um, astrology helps with all that. And then we can layer transits on top of that, which are um, kind of how everybody's heard about astrology, where people predict the future or they talk about something that's happened in the past. And, and you're going to help define what transits are, right? Yes. In fact, if people are local to Atlanta, you're going to be teaching how to read your own chart Yes, here I, at the center? I am going to be teaching at the uh, Love and Light Institute. I already did a short part of a workshop with you guys, yes. and there was great feedback. <laughs> they were almost in tears. They were like, wait, after an hour and a half, please don't leave. Tell us more. Right. So we're happy you're coming back and doing a really thorough lesson on how to read your chart. Yeah. Depending on um, demand, I might just start trying to teach classes here. But while I'm here, because I know a lot of people aren't in Atlanta, which is where the center is, they're all over the world. But um, this book right here, anybody can get this book from like Amazon or there's other outlets for it. It's called Astrology for Yourself. It's Douglas Block and Demetra George. This book is a simple how to do your own chart and understand it so that it can help your life. And you can pull a chart, which is verbiage for... Oh, she has mine. Can Jamie you tell Butler. her secretly in the back of my head, I'm already designing on Zoom <laughs> that she's going to be teaching this class online. So worldwide lumineers, don't worry. Next year, I'm going to get Lord Boone in front of that camera so she can teach us all. I and I love the way that you teach. And you'll hear this today, guys, as you're watching the interview or listening, that she is down to earth. You know how to be technical. But you come at it from such a compassionate and emotional standpoint. Oh, thank you. That's I try true. to translate it because, again, this looks like gobbledygook. Yeah, it does. Um, I was calling it all sorts of things, and she just kind of looked at me like, you probably need to stop. It looks like gobbledygook. I think they're beautiful, though. But um, And just let me give you another resource, um, Lumineers. Go to astro.com, and you can pull. That, that's what the term is for plotting or pulling your chart for free on astro.com so you can pull your chart and then you can get your book and you can Sit down start to it? just have fun with it and just learn little things as much or as little as you want to learn you can okay can i touch the book please and see <laughs> if it's really that easy of what you say it is because lord when i look at that i think it, it's color coded which is pretty and it's got signs that don't make sense to me and lines on it that are clearly something i don't get mm -hmm. so well, can i tell you what it is oh wow that's nice yeah, isn't that neat? Um, can I tell you what it is? Because I think this is really interesting. Yes. The theory behind astrology is that we are all a part of a great system. The solar system, I mean, think about it. The seasons, everything is repetitive and can be plotted mathematically, you guys. So that's how we know how many days there are. That's how we measure time. Um, and all of the planets and everything move in a very measurable cyclical motion. It's kind of amazing how scientific it gets. And we're all a part of nature, all of us. So the theory is that when we come into this physical world, which is measurable by our human science, that that moment in space and time where we go from energy to the physical world is sacred. So when we're born, that's a sacred point in space and time. So this chart is a mathematical three-dimensional measurement of exactly when your space and time moment was and where everything was in the sky at that exact moment. Isn't that beautiful? It is beautiful. So it's almost like if your mom, there's always an X in the middle of, of these charts. There's not an X on this one, but right here is where they begin. That's where wherever your mother had you on earth, which is why you ask for your birth time, your birth date, your birth year. They do the latitude and longitude. I mean, all this is about latitude and longitude. And these are all the little symbols for everything in the sky. 
and these are all the stars. So this is the position of the Earth. I mean, it gets as in-depth and scientific as you want to go with it. But luckily, <laughs> luckily back in the old days, <laughs> no, luckily there's a computer. So you go do, 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 and it spits it out because I couldn't begin to plot this. It's so complicated. But astrologers used to have to learn. They'd spend their whole life learning how to do this. And now all we have to do is go to astro.com and, and plot it. But the, but the point is, we, because we are a part of this beautiful system, um, this is sort of our, I don't want to say our destiny, but it's our challenges, our lessons, our talents. So we all have free will, I believe. So it's a, a map, and you can choose to read it the way you need to. Exactly. Just like your life, you choose to live it the way you choose to live it, but isn't it nice to know, oh, wow, I'm not a victim to all these, these recurring things that seem to be happening in my life. I look at someone's chart and, and I go, well, these are your lessons and you're supposed to get from here to here. And it's beautiful. And by the way, what about these talents here? Are you public speaking enough? Are you a teacher? <laughs> and I swear, because I'm looking at their chart and they go, well, I've always <laughs> wanted to be a teacher. I mean, I hear this over and over. I've always wanted to be a teacher, but... I mean, Maybe they haven't followed it. And I'm like, it's right here. So Go that's do it. Natural it's talent. That's what you're born for. You're it's aligned validating. with it. Mm -hmm. So it wouldn't be like a, a struggle or difficult to follow your natural talent? Like, would it show great ease in your life if you're to align with mm -hmm. what you're It can show great is? ease. You know what I think the best way to put it, Jamie, is that it's energies. It's influences, right? So that can take many forms, Right. It can. It can take many forms, and it's our choice. I mean, I, I read, I had a really fun reading the other day with twins. <laughs> and they were born three minutes apart, and everybody always asks me about twins. And they say, well, what about twins? Like, they're trying to trick me up about this or whatever. And I'm like, well, you know, yeah, their charts are nearly identical. But they had very different lives. They had similar themes in their life. They did. But they were making different choices with the same energies. So does that make sense? Oh, absolutely. Everybody yeah. can own the same car, but they'll completely drive it in different ways. Exactly. Exactly. Or they all get to, maybe they both get to buy a Camry, but one buys a blue one, one buys a red one, and, you know, they drive it in different ways. And, and so that's something as you, when you're looking at the astrological chart, you can define which ways that car would work better for them. Yeah. Like just kind of pair that natural ease together. And then, because I know with me, you've talked a lot about this may shock you, <laughs> Lumineers, but I'm a very private person, <laughs> but I love being an extrovert. So yeah. fit that somewhere in your logic. But Makes perfect sense here. Yeah. Laura held up my chart and she was like, look, there's a line here in the middle. Everything below is your private. And that's where most of everything is. But I had such a, a conflict about you know, going for the show I always wanted to do, uh, being on stage. I have yearned to be in front of a camera and to talk about growth, spirituality, and these things for a long time, decades. My father even um, brought back to my memory of talking about it when I was six and seven in the back seat of the car, telling him when we'd go by radio towers and TV stations that I would perk up in the back seat and go, that's what I'm going to do. You know, and so here Laura was like, oh, totally, yes, own it, go for it, do it. And I'm like, really? I mean, I want to, but I also have this deep craving to be private. So you can have does, both. Right, but well, I didn't know both. how. Yeah, well, isn't it fun? This is part of what I love astrology for. I don't want to say it gives people permission, but it, that's how, that was my aha moment. And I, when I do this for people, and I want to teach other people how to do this for themselves, you had an, a validating, oh, it was validating is the word. Yes. And it's like an aha, like, yes, Jamie, you know, that makes sense. You know, you have these energies, you have these tendencies, and that's okay. That's how you are. Isn't it amazing? Like, we know how we are. All, all astrology does to me is it helps you have a conversation with yourself about things you already know about yourself and feel good about it. That, that's what it is. Now, this can get real addicting. And it's, it, it can be addictive. It really can. But it's, um, I think there are many different paths to the same truths. 
And so astrology wouldn't be for everybody. It wouldn't be as interesting for everybody. But I think there are a lot. When I did the workshop and I started just talking to people about what I believe about astrology and how I've just used it as a tool, it's a tool, you guys. It's not a dogma. There, there are astrologers that think about it like a dogma, like these are the rules and it has to be this. And I don't believe that. I believe these are tools for us to make our own and uh, use them for good to either help ourselves grow, which is why I think we're all here, um, or to help other people. And I actually put another twist on it because, again, when I was three, when I, I'm just kidding, I started doing this. 25 um, years ago when she was three. <laughs> I, um, no, I, I started re doing reading astrology charts as well as I, I'm also very interested in tarot. And I started having psychic experiences with it. And what I found is that it's also a great gateway for intuitive work. So I kind of bring my own mix mix to it. And you Ish, can too. Does. I mean, people that are into astrology can... I just... I'm, I don't want to say I'm a rule breaker, but I'm a creative person and I don't cling to dogma. I love it. Did you see? Did I you don't cling here? to dogma. <laughs> I'm not a rule breaker. I'm just creative. Please don't teach that to my children. <laughs> my children will use that one every time. Mom, I'm not a rule breaker. I'm just creative. Like it's, it's a curse of mine. I don't know. I don't get it. Yeah. It's a great. Okay. No, you mentioned something where you said you had psychic experiences. Yes. Okay, I'm I'm hooking into that. Can you yep. share some of those or um, just in my own life in general or well, with astrology? You, you said you started getting into astrology and the tarot cards and you started having these experiences. What were they? Okay. And... Well, um, I guess astrologically I uh, well, okay. So get comfortable. Here we go. <laughs> I I did not realize as a child, and this is partly how Jamie and I have bonded, honestly, because Jamie has really been public about your psychic abilities and has written some great books, and it's it's really been an inspiration to me, and I have felt a lot of camaraderie with her because I, and I have different abilities, sort of tweaks than Jamie, um, but when I started really researching these things, it started to really open me up and give me more avenues for my psychic abilities to grow and expand. So that's another thing that can really happen with these uh, tools. So what were some of those experiences? <laughs> I'm still going to dig I, down I the same know. path. What happened? I, it started with, um, well, as a child and as a young person, I was very tormented. It wasn't pleasant. It was um, really difficult. And I, it was spirits in my room and... Um, I'm very clear, what they call clear sentient. You know, they're the five clears, the psychic senses, and clear sentient is the psychic feeling. So I'm very empathic, and I just did not understand that I'm like the sponge, mm -hmm. and it's like everywhere I went. And my God, as a child, you know, you really don't. You're so open, and I would just be almost sick because I had been around something negative you know, or someone negative. So I learned um, as I got older that it's because I'm empathic and I learned how to protect myself more and um, clear my energy more, which we've, we yeah. can do a show on that. I think, I know you have oh, done some shows on that. It, no, again. But I have had to really learn how to do that. And I, I'm very, I'm a big advocate to help other people and just talk about it out loud because it's kind of common. I mean, it's just people aren't talking about it. The minute you talk about it, everybody's like, oh, that happened to me. Right. So, but anyway, um, that that was sort of the uncomfortable part of it. Um, but the gift of it is that as I started working with astrology and tarot, I started, um, spirits started getting in touch with me. Um, I feel them and I then they started sending me pictures and now I'm, I am becoming a little bit more clear audience. So, when I do astrology, it's it really becomes more of a reading, where I have psychic abilities. With so, it. not to put words in your mouth, yeah. you know, always yeah. stop me if it is. But 
when you mentioned about being younger that it wasn't always easy, Mm -mm. did you find through astrology and tarot as instruments and tools, I think is what you're calling them, tools, did you find ways to understand or protect yourself? Mm -hmm. Um, I know in my example, I didn't have people that were older than me or had people in my life who knew what those experiences were. In my family, it was just all called imaginary. Yeah. You know, and go about your way. Oh, it's great imagination. Even if I was happy or distraught, it was always labeled imagination. Did you have support in growing up when you were discovering those My, abilities? Or was it only coming from the astrological charts and tarot? I was a very alone with my situation. And unlike you, where you, I, I believe, were seeing spirits and hearing them talk Mm -hmm. I didn't have that experience so as a child you know you could say oh I saw such and such and I was talking to such and such it's more clear for a small child to talk about for me it was just these overwhelming feelings right so my family has actually only been supportive of any of this that I've ever done but when I was younger I there was nothing they could talk about I mean and I was on a lot of meds just depression meds when I was, you know, in my early 20s. Um, And I didn't realize it was to mask a lot of just the stuff I was receiving, right? So it's a little bit different. And I'm so glad we're talking about this because there are people out there that are like me, I know, and they don't understand what it is and they'll be labeled. I mean, I have had depression, but I think once I really figured out I was empathic, I have it, a lot of it lifted, off of me um, because I, now I know what it is. Yeah, if that you know answers your question. How to manage it and where to place it, how to have a relationship with it rather than having it feel like it's consuming you or in control over you. So to expand on what you were asking me, as I started doing this, the other beautiful thing is that I really started to get in touch with my guides through working on this. And I believe everyone has guides, but I started to get in touch with my guides. So yes, I started getting help and information um, and also started helping others with this. So it was not a negative thing. I knew it was of the light. I knew that it was something that could benefit others. And I also felt like, wow, I can really, I have a gift that I can help others with. You do have a gift. Oh, thank you. Can you tell in somebody's chart if they are psychic or intuitive or you can? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. (laughs) That's a beautiful thing. Mindset. (laughs) Does does mine say I have any psychic or intuitive abilities? Well, there's many different ways to, um, to, there's many different things that would point to that, but you have a huge point to it, which is a Neptune in your first house. Which is Neptune is is the other world spirits psychic abilities all of that and it's a huge planet it's it's a big huge influence and it's right on your first house which your first house is you it's your body it's Jamie so I am spirit that's right so you literally have had this just right on you just like your Jamie. That's almost like your filter is Neptune. So it's all psychic ability. And it's also interesting. Neptune's a lot about the stage. And it's a lot about creating, um, uh, I don't know, theater, movies, Like film. the Lighter Side Network? Yes. <gasps> Did I tell you So I the fact that you're attracted to all this. Did you get the email? Did you get it? <laughs> the creative play of consciousness. Did we talk about this? No. Oh my God, it came but out that's a few what that weeks is. ago. Yeah, that's, that's you. You're the queen of it. Oh, the I other that. thing that I loved, I did a, I did a cool. chart for you and Corey, who is her partner with the Institute. Yes. But what really came out of that was just how, how fun you are. Wherever your son is in the chart is really important. And her son is in the fifth house. And I'm going to talk about this in my workshop because everybody needs to know what house their son is in because it really can help. But the fifth house is, it's fun. It's, it's fun. It's romance. It's not, it's laughing. It's children. It's play. 
So I remember the first time that we sat down, I said, she, you're going to be very unhappy unless you laugh and unless it's fun and you get really, you don't want to get bogged down and all the, and then luckily her business partner has the son in the 10th house, Corey. And I was like, Corey, you're the CEO. <laughs> okay. You have the hard conversations and sit behind the desk with the cigar or whatever she needs to do. <laughs> And Jamie needs to float around and create. And be a fairy. And, and the fifth and house is also the house of creativity. So you're just a very oh creative gosh. person. Yes. Very creative. I remember after you did that session for us, I started prioritizing my life as fun and play being the most valuable attribute. See, and it, isn't it just validating? It do it changed everything. Well, because you've always known this, but you didn't feel like it could be your priority. I mean, that's right. what's so well, interesting about astrology. Come on, United States, where we are, they don't value having fun and playing. You know, that's something of a lazy person's attributes. It's your right. You're not getting anything done. It's your thing. That way. It's your thing, and it's also about your happiness. You know, I was at dinner with some friends, and it's so great because now my my girlfriends they all speak astrology now because I do their charts, so we can actually speak the language. But um, one of them um, has been married at least a couple of times, um, and if she's not married, she's in a marriage, like she's in a committed relationship, and which I'm not. I mean, some of, we're not like some of the other ladies there are not like that. And here she is, you know, I was thinking, yeah, I might marry this guy. I mean, it's like Elizabeth Taylor <laughs> a little bit, Elizabeth Taylor. And, and one of the girls at the table was like, oh, seriously, are you kidding? You've already been married. And I just went, she has her son in the seventh house. She's going to get married. She's about marriage. She needs to be married. Give her, cut her some slack. So this can cut people some slack. You know, she's a son in the seventh house, my friend. Huh. She needs to be married. She's happy being married. So let her get married. So you, you're happy having fun. Yes. Just have fun. And that's how you'll be productive, actually. That's how you'll... You know, I love the sun in the... The sun in whatever house is really about your impact, which I love. So you talk to people about what... Here's how you can have the most impact in your life? Is it through children? Is it through being a mom? Is it through being married? Is it through running a corporation or an entity? Is it through showing people how to have fun? Oh, I want that last option, please. Right? Um, That's your option. Showing people how to have fun. That's your option. But with spiritual, everyday, you know, psychic mediumship abilities. Mm -hmm. like, and being creative. Right? Yes. Yeah. Okay, I know we've talked a lot about your astrology and kind of how you came into your psychic abilities and everything, but um, Heads Up Lumineers, that's not what she does for a living. You took a completely different route. Yes. You went solo mio, entrepreneurship, you built a huge company. How do you blend these two? And more importantly, how did you... Come out. Yeah. With... It was like coming out. <laughs> yeah, it's like, I'm serious. How did, how did you come out with... It was scary. ...to this corporation that you built yep. and go, well, by the way, I know how to communicate with energy and spirits yep. and tarot and astrology and yep. I, I channel and I'm this and empathic. Like, mm -hmm. did the mm -hmm. brakes come on? What happened? Well, yeah, that's a great... So I never... I was all... This is my love, all of this stuff. It's my love. But, you know, I always sort of put it on the back burner and didn't want to talk about it in public because you never know how people are going to receive it. You never know. You never know. Um, and, you know, I don't do it for attention. I don't do it. I do it because I can do it, right? So I started a company 12 years ago, and it's a very corporate company, and I work with big corporations in the South, mind you, in the very conservative South. And um, it was probably about eight years ago. Gosh, that would have made me 13. Yeah, 13. <laughs> <laughs> good. Um, it was about eight years ago that I really came out of the closet with it, 
and I mean like where in corporate settings, I, I didn't announce that I did it, but I wouldn't deny that I did it. And I would talk about it openly um, because people would talk to me years ago and they would say, I heard you do psychic readings. And I was like, mm. <laughs> you just smoothed over it with and a, I would change the subject. <laughs> you know, if it had anything to do with my my work at all, or if I were out in public, but you kept them very separate. Oh my gosh, I was Wait. terrified. Why were you terrified? Because I work with CEOs of big companies. I work with lawyers. I work with people that you know wear the navy blue suit, and I mean, I and I love those people. They're my clients. You know. And it's not what we talk about. I mean, we talk about business things. We do business deals. They are, um, I, I sell uh, office furniture. And, um, and I mean, I sell it to the UPSs of the world and Coca-Cola and um, Norfolk Southern and a lot of huge companies like that. And I, I didn't want to bring it up. And, and I will tell you, I have to give some credit to <laughs> my business partner who I started this company with. Because you asked me, how did I have... We literally had to have a conversation because it could have damaged our company. And I said, Ellen, her name's Ellen Turner, and I said, Ellen, I, I want to start being really honest about this. I mean, she was 110% behind me. She said, you have to be yourself. I completely support you. And she said, when she's a little braver than me, she's an Aries, um, she was like, who cares what they think? The people, you know, the right people are going to get it, you know, and she was just very supportive. So I've had her to support me. And then, can I tell you, the opposite of everything I was scared of happened. I mean, I have th these same CEOs do readings with me. Really? Yes. So instead I do of readings for my clients now. So the, the first <laughs> line of thinking was, oh, my God, they're not going to understand me. I, I might lose their business or this will go. Polar can, opposite. And it wasn't. They were like, can I, get Polar in line? can I get on your schedule? Polar opposite. And I know probably there are competitors or people out there that say things behind my back or whatever. I've never heard it. I don't study it. And I don't, I'm not worried about it. And the other thing that I think is really interesting is that like, we do charts for the company. I mean, and I do psychic readings for things we're trying to make decisions on. So I think it's very helpful to incorporate this intuition into our business. And we do it every day. And like I, I read for you and your business partner, yes. I read for businesses now. It's amazing. It's really, it's really great. I, I really try to help in that way. I think it's a, I think it's a secret weapon, not so secret weapon. Not so secret weapon. I do. I, I can't tell you how good it feels to not compartmentalize my no. spiritual psychic abilities and my business abilities. Yeah. Because even, you know, starting Love and Light back yeah. in 2000, it had to be that way. Yes. Because not even the state of Georgia could register what I was doing. They're like, I'm sorry, we don't have anything for that kind of LLC. I would have to check other all the time and then explain, well, it's like consulting, you know? And so I was trained to keep it far away. Right. And here you were the first person I came across that were like, oh no, we're just going to, we're just going to put that all together. We're just mesh that together. And yeah. Try to make that mesh it like, together. Oh, it's exciting. It's becoming, um, very, it's a lot normal now. It's a lot more normal. The more I talk about it, people are really interested. Um, I just think it's, you know, I think the other thing too, which I, this is a part of what I love, why I'm joining this network that's coming. This is part of why I'm joining the network. It's because it's, it's normal people. I don't know what normal people are, but it's, you know, it, <laughs> whatever we look like, it's normal. I, I am, um, I'm not on a billboard with a crystal ball, you know, in a turban. I went to college and worked really hard and started a company and I have employees and I pay taxes and I have a line of credit at the bank and all those really exciting things. And, um, I'm a normal person and I am not doing this, you know, to get rich and I'm not doing this to become famous. I'm doing it because I want to help people and it legitimizes, it's legitimate why I'm doing my, my motivations are have integrity and all the people in this network do. I will say she's so normal yet when she announced that she was so excited to join the lighter side network, we cued the hawks up in the air to screech and scream. 
like Laura Boone's connection to the animals above and everything. They're like, yeah, Laura Boone, go. It's so, <laughs> so fun. I can hear you guys at the back going, it's what? I know. <laughs> Hawks are flying above. It's um, <laughs> it's exciting. And there's a place for it. There's a place for there's it. There's a huge place for it. Yep. I, I have a few more questions yes. before we wrap this up. Um, two questions. How did you approach your business partner? What were some key phrases or words that you used in saying, I know you've known me for a while, but this is really where I want to go into metaphysics, into you know, this new place. And do you have any advice for people who are listening that crave to have their business world or their company or even their home life to understand them better with their natural abilities? Mm -hmm. I think the way, her name is Ellen. I think the way I approached Ellen was by doing it with her first and really talking about it. I think I was very clear with everyone, including Ellen, about what my motivation is. And when I say that, I mean that I come from the light that I just want this to help, that I'm not trying to get anybody to believe me or adopt the way I believe. It's very much like I don't, I don't judge anyone for not agreeing with this. I, I, that's okay. There's many different paths to the same truth. So I really was trying to be non-threatening. I'm very respectful of other people. When I ask them for their respect of what I'm trying to do, I always at, at first say, I respect however you believe or however you feel about this. That's the first thing I do. So when you're coming out of the closet, guys, about any kind of ability, the first thing you do is you're not asking for somebody to believe you. You're not asking for somebody to understand. You're not asking for somebody to have had the same experience. You're asking, asking them for their respect, and you have to give respect before you can get respect. And that's how it's always worked for me. Um, and then, then I ask, then I also want to say, guys, be courageous about speaking up about your own abilities or what you believe. Um, because what I have found, and I know Jamie spent her life doing this, and I have found that the more I just talk about my experience, it the impact it has on other people is incredible. Other people can find the courage and your courage to come out and talk about their experience. And really, all the boats rise. You know, you, your, your truth helps others be able to speak their truth or notice their ability. I've had so many people that first came to see me for a reading four or five years ago and they're like oh my gosh I thought that was so weird and freaky and now I'm having the same experience and I'm like see so I think me kind of coming out and being bold and just saying I am what I am and it, it started other to help other people I love that and it, fill in it shifts from what I've seen in your world and mine it shifts people from identifying that all the things that are happening to them have a logical terminology, and if they can't be explained, they're to be dismissed, Yeah. into identifying them as being not a bright idea, but an intuitive moment, and not a coincidence or luck, but alignment, mm -hmm. you know, law of attraction. Mm -hmm. You know, all of a sudden, there are better explanations for how they're naturally working, which includes your intuitive world. Right. The more open. Yes. The more open. And there's such power in um, naming things, isn't it? There's such a power. And that's old, old wisdom, you guys. When you can name something, it means that you're able to focus on it and you're able to acknowledge that it exists. And sometimes just when you speak your truth, um, like when I've named what my deal is and I've named, oh, wait a minute, this is being empathic. Oh, wait a minute, this is being clairsentient. Oh, maybe that's that tingling feeling is spirit. You know, when I start to be able to name things, then it grows and it becomes more crystallized. So you have a better relationship with it. Mm -hmm. It becomes in your consciousness. And then when you name it for yourself, 
I mean, I can't tell you how many people have come to me after readings and they go, my gosh, you said that and I just never thought of it that way. And I named something yes. that they had to sit with for a while and then they're like, I have that too. That's what that is. And these are the things that you'll be teaching on your show. <laughs> it's a lot of what the network is about. I mean, I would say in general. In general, yes, and many different avenues of it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm so excited about it. I, I can't wait to do these shows. I'm going to do more about astrology, you guys. By the way, I'm also going to be teaching some workshops at the Institute. Mm -hmm. um, I've got a free give back class March 9th, Thursday in the evening at the Love and Light Institute dot work, I believe is that the right website? It is yep. here in Atlanta, Georgia. And then I'm gonna also do a small group workshop, which is the first one I'm doing, which I'm really excited about, where I'm not sure how many people I'm gonna fit in the class, but it's not gonna be a big class and everybody's gonna bring their chart and I'm gonna work with them to help them understand their own chart. So we're all gonna kind of really dig in. And they the can find this information on your website? Do you um, have your events listed there? LauraBoon.org, um, but also the Love and Light Institute. I believe there, if you, especially if you follow them on Facebook, I believe they send out yep, um, notices. Yep, and you can also go to withloveandlight.com. With Love and that and Light. Is, is that the right website? Am I t saying the wrong one? With Love and Light is the center's website. Oh, okay. And, <laughs> and the center will have everything of all of what we're doing. Okay. Yep. Yeah, but we're going to advertise more. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I'm getting my network stuff together as we speak. It's not there yet, but it's going to happen really soon. We're working on it. Yes, it's happening soon. Woo. So excited. Okay. I would like to know before we close off, what are the top reasons people come to see you for astrology reading? People come to see me um, mainly for, I do a lot of couple readings parent child readings and business partner readings. So I do a lot of partner readings, which I really love working with two people. Oh, I was not aware of that. I'll, maybe let me back up. Definitely those, but probably the number one <laughs> is uh, relationship readings. And especially I have a lot of girlfriends <laughs> that are single. So they, they call me with the, you know, guy's birth date that they're dating. They just met. Or whatever. So I do really, a lot and they of... straight up ask his birthday and where he's oh, yeah. born and the time, <laughs> and then like oh, run yeah. away with the information and yeah. find out about him. Mm -hmm. It's really great. It's really useful. I think it'd be much more easier just to learn how to see his energetic field and just read him right there in the spots. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, Let me look can, at that light you're shining. You can do mm. that. <laughs> yeah, I can do the astrology piece. But I would say that. And then um, I, when I do a reading too, Jamie, I kind of go freeform. I mean, you, I've done readings for you. I'll do a little bit of astrology, a little bit of tarot, and then I'm really doing my psychic stuff. So it kind of goes off into a lot of, it's, it's, it's expanding and it's really fun and I'm free for, I'm creative. Last question. Yes. So you've mentioned people come to you for relationships, mm -hmm. like why they come to you. What are at least two things that people get from an astrology reading that they're totally really not expecting like what are the surprises mm. of having your chart read I, that people just don't know of yeah I think one of the things that I always talk about are major transits and I know maybe some of you don't know what I mean when I say major transits I actually have a blog on lauraboon.org it's the blog I call it tsunamis I call them tsunamis um and well, you can read about it delicate it's yeah um <laughs> A lot of times people are going through what's called a major transit and it's a big life lesson or energy influence and they typically last for at least a year. Some of them last, got Pluto ones last up to eight years um, and they are very strong. Can you check that thing, make sure I don't have that. Your transits are not on here. Oh, it's not, we where are, do you find them? We are all having major transits, all of us, all the time. but. But the deal is, where are we having them? What part of our life are we having them in? Um, so when you when you say, what's the big surprise? Inevitably, I will sit somebody down, and Saturn is always just the tough one, right? Saturn. And people sit down in front of me, and I just, I'm like, honey. <laughs> and she does do this. Saturn transit. <laughs> Let's talk about it. Here's where it's really going to be tough for you. Here's where the challenge is. It's okay. Here's when it ends. And here's what it's for. They're not just to make us miserable. 
They're to help us. They have gifts in them. All of them do. So that is always an aha moment for people where I'm like, Mm. this isn't your life. You know, people get in a transit and without the perspective of astrology, I know that's one thing you told me when I read for you. You were like, Laura, wait a minute. It's like I get timing and big swaths of time and perspective. That's a major transit. So people kind of take a deep breath and they go, okay. So things are going to get easier in about six months. And actually what I need to be focusing on during this to get the most out of this time is this. So that's a really good, productive, healthy, positive thing that everybody can get from a reading. And everybody, you learn where your major trances are when you teach yourself a little bit about this. And you can follow your own chart and know where your major transits are and do this for yourself really easily. I want to teach people how to fish. You know what I mean? Yes. I want to teach people how to do that. Sing me that that song. I'm not a magician. This is, this is knowledge that everyone can have it. uh, I want to give people the ability to do this for themselves. Well, we look forward to seeing you back here many, many times in 2017. I will do some astrology videos. How about that? On the network? Um, Yes, please. Yes. All of that and more. (laughs) And I believe I'm going to steal you uh, back here on the Lighter Size show before you launch your show because you work a lot with crystals. I do. So, Lumineers, if you love Laura Boone, check out an upcoming episode with Gritting, how to use your crystals to clean energy, clean your home, clean your space. It's going to be a great show. A lot of people ask about gritting and how to protect themselves with crystals and how to use crystals. It's a whole new world. (laughs) <laughs> fun I thank you so much for thank being you, here like, I'm going to hug you now just oh. bring it in <laughs> oh thank, my you, God. thank you Jamie thank you thank you thank you Jamie and thank you producers for having me <laughs> they're and back there they are they're behind the camera <laughs> hey Lumineers remember it's not woo woo it's true true, true. true. it is oh pound it down <laughs> <laughs> it's Laura Boo <laughs> I'm so keeping that. That's <laughs> gonna end with you going. Fade to black. Fade to black. It's it. Drop the mic. Disclaimer right after that. I need a mic to drop. <laughs>